Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I'm in Japan. From Black Adder, which is an independent bottler, I have a Japanese whiskey called the Igashima. It's a 50 centiliter bottle, 61.5% ABV. Whiskey base number 106774. And it's made by the White Oak Distillery, also known as Akishi. Akishi actually is a city in Japan, which means sunrise city. And so in the morning you can see up on the ocean how the sun comes up. Now, Akishi actually, the White Oak Distillery received, um, sorry, they were founded in 1888. They received their license to distill malted um, spirits um, in 1919. No longer just uh, Zake that they normalize did, but rather actually malted spirits. And in 1984, they started actually producing whiskey way back then. So this was produced, or at least it was distilled in June 2014, bottled November 2017. It was cast number 101474, which was a Oloroso Sherry Butt. And there was a total of 847 bottles. Now, the most amazing thing for me is not the design of the bottle, very well done, but the price, 159 euros. That's almost like $200 for a half liter bottle. That's over 320 euros per liter. This is B-tag price. This is Buffalo Trace antique collection price for a Japanese whiskey that is three years old. Now, um, Japanese whiskey is very, very expensive anyways. There's been the boom and there's been the bust, basically. Um, all these distilleries in Japan no longer have anything, basically, with a real age statement on it. I just bought a Yamazaki 12 for like $120. Um, if you go for the Hibiki 17, when I started out three and a half years ago, it was about $100. Now it's like 800 to 1000 it's unbelievable the prices people are willing to pay for Japanese whiskeys. And here as well. So let's do a little bit of math. Um, let's say the distribution costs of this whiskey are 50%. So 50% um, goes to the importer and 100 um, euros, $100 remain with the distillery. Why not? I'm not sure if that actually works out or not, but let's say it's 100 and they have 847 bottles. So if you had 80 bottles, you'd have a, um, an 8,000, um, 8, um, wait, sorry, if you had 80 bottles, you'd have a um, 100, you'd have 8,000 euros. Um, and if you have 800 bottles out of a little thing like this, you're paying $100 per bottle, you have 80 thousand euros or dollars dollars in one single cask <laughs> and even if it's only half of that that they get for this one cask that's a heck of a lot of money for a three year old whiskey so i think i'm gonna have to go buy a japanese cask and then bottle it <laughs> all right let's see here um now the problem that I have with whis this with with this whiskey is basically it's over sherried in my personal opinion. Another distillery that over sherries their whiskey is Tamdu. Unfortunately, if you put water in Tamdu, it turns into this fantastic spirit. But if you leave it as it is, it's kind of like Ugh. I always compare it to the um, microphone if I'm working on the soundboards of. Um, wherever I'm at a concert or whatever, and I get to do the um, the mixing of the, the, the different channels, um, I can actually take the gain, I can turn it up so much that we have a distortion. And this is what I'm getting. I'm always getting a sherry distortion with this Black Adder whiskey as well as with Tamdu. I actually compared this, first of all, in my German video to Nika from the Barrel, which was totally different beast. The Nika is so much better. <laughs> Um, and this is so much more up that alley. This is like a 70% overlapping of how they both are. 
this is actually a little bit more descent. Um, this is a little bit less sherry intensive. Um, when I do taste this, sixty one point five percent. At the end, I get something a little bit weird. I'm going to call it fish oil. I don't know if you ever had the omega three little capsules, and if you cut them open and you take a whiff, that's actually got that fish oil in there, and that's what I'm getting at the end. I could have called it kerosene or diesel or something like that. No, that's too extreme. But I do get this fish oil towards the end, and it just ruins the entire um, experience of this whiskey because the yeah the um, the aftertaste, the finish is just not what it can and or should be, in my personal opinion. So let's bring these down a little bit. Um, 61%, we're gonna bring them down to about, four, first of all, about 48. It gets much better, but the, t the finish remains the way it is, unfortunately. Black Adder is a beautiful, beautiful company, independent bottler. They do not use any type of filtering, so it's not just non-chill um, filtered, it's non-filtered whiskey. What they do is actually when they, um, empty the barrels they put a grate um it's like that and anything that's bigger than like um three millimeters gets caught and anything's less than like a one millimeter in diameter flows through and if you ever have bottled black adder um at the bottom the sediment and you can actually shake it and you have like this snow globe and it's just amazing um <laughs> It's just it's just straight from the barrel. I mean, um, Booker's, Elijah Craig, all this, you've never had that charcoal in there because they do take a cloth and they actually filter it through there and keep all that charcoal back. Black Adder says, eh, we don't need that. We want to give the most natural, authentic experience possible. And this is what they did was a three-year-old Japanese whiskey as well. They really gave us a really, really strong... Um, almost overwhelming whiskey here. And a little bit of sulfur in there as well with that sherry. Is this a bad whiskey? Definitely not. Is this a great whiskey? Definitely not. This is a three-year-old Japanese whiskey that was made to make money. As I mentioned, 80 some bottles, 100 euros per bottle, 80,000 euros just from this one cask. This was sold to the market very quickly and they didn't really care about their um, image or their brand name or so on. This was a cash cow. This was a making money-making experience. Now, if you ever have the chance to get a bottle of this, buy it. Go ahead. Wait a year or two and then resell it for about 30% price increase. Don't open it. <laughs> Especially towards the end, the entire experience here is totally um, negatively impacted by that oily, and not good oily, but a rather fish oily type of nah, moment. If I go up to the um, harbor in Denmark, where I sometimes went on vacation at, there's a nice city called Esbjerg. Esbjerg is maybe one of the fishing capitals of the North Sea. Every day, I'm sure there's dozens of fishing boats come in there. They have entire factories that process all those fish that come in from the North Sea. And it has a certain type of smell. These fish have been on ice for maybe a day or a week or even so, and they, of course, cut off the heads and take out the take out the fish bones and so on and create fillets. And yet there's a certain atmosphere and a certain taste and a certain flavor in the air. That's exactly what I'm getting at the end. And I'm just not I'm just not buying this for a price tag of 300 euros per liter, 160 um, euros per half liter. Now, um, Daniel, um, Daniel from www.mickwhiskey.com actually gave me this sample. Thank you. I'm so sorry that my review is not a raving um, compliment, but rather a whiskey that is mm, showing its youth and showing a little bit of the 
greediness of the entire system here. Going back to Tamdu, batch strength number three. Put a little bit of water in it, it tames it down, it gets rid of that distortion, and this turns into a fabulous drinking whiskey. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Even still at just over 50%, I'm going to go for 52% here. This is still really, really a sherry bomb. Nice. Mmm. You have that typical Tamdu moment in there, which has a lot of familiarities here to the White Oak Distillery Akashi with its Aigushima. So I'm giving this a solid C, a front, um, value for money, definitely an F. I'm so sorry. It's not worth any of that money whatsoever you'd buy for it. Hopefully you have not yet opened it up and tried it yourself. It's not worth the money that you paid for it. I'm so sorry. Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. You've never heard of this before, I'm sure. If you have, oh wow, you're one of the 847 lucky people that got the bottle there. Thank you very much for watching. Like, subscribe, and tell others about this crazy American in Europe tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. My videos come out on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. All the best. See you soon. Bye-bye.